Hi you guys, I am here to share eighth grade curriculum with you guys. Pardon me if I get out of breath. I am pregnant with number seven. I've had a lot of moms reach out to me asking me what homeschool curriculums that I like and I felt like I would start with my eighth graders curriculum because I feel like there's so much information out there regarding curriculum for elementary school grades, but not as much for middle school. He is graduated last year from the eighth grade and he's going to ninth grade, but I wanted to go over what I used for him in eighth grade. So the first subject I'm gonna start with is going to be history. So history, this is a one year course year one course in history this curriculum is by the good and the beautiful what i like about this curriculum is i have several kids as i mentioned to you before you can do this curriculum with all of your kids together um the first chapter talks about like creation It talks, there's chapters about ancient Egypt, but you also can get the books to go with it, which are their notebooks. So they have different grades. We have grades seven through nine, grades four through six, grades one through three. So you can actually teach a whole lesson to all of your sprouts, all of your children, and you can have them working on like the same thing but something different so like this is the first through third book like my smallest child would be working on something like this but my eighth grader he would have to dig deeper he would have to go do some research and then do like his workbook page also so i love the good and the beautiful history i don't feel like it covers enough black history so that's stuff that you would have to dig into yourself. And we did a lot of just like read alouds together. We also did documentaries and then wrote papers about what we were studying at the time. But this, this curriculum also comes with a game that you can play with the family, a history game, which I have in the house. But I will link below each curriculum that I used so that you guys can look into it yourselves and see if it's something that fits your needs. But this is the big hit book of history stories. The colors, the pictures were beautiful. So they're great stories to read with your children to learn a little bit more about history. For science, we had I had some unit studies that I would do as a family. Um, another one that I had from Good and the Beautifuls is like Anthropods, Human Body, which was great. Um, and those also come with like one main book and workbooks so that you can divide them between all of your kids' ages, depending on if you have a lot of children. They're very interactive too. This is another one. This is by Gather Around Homeschool. This is like a bird unit that we do. So you have your teacher's manual. This is also something you can do with your family as a group. It comes with the week at a glance. Like it's very organized, but you get like everything that you're gonna be reading to your kids about the bald eagle. eagle. And then they all get their own workbook. This is like my kindergartner's. He was pre-K actually doing this one. So he has this one and he's still like learning about what we're learning, but he's doing it at his grade level. So my son CJ, who's, they have the middle school one. So he would do more research and then he would have more like writing to do as far as learning about what we read. So those two are The Good and the Beautiful and Gather Around Homeschool. For language arts, we use the language arts for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. 
He used these cards all three years. These are the geography and grammar cards. Basically just, um, you know, where all the countries are and grammar cards, like what are the four sentence types, statement question, command, exclamation. So he reviewed these all four years. For eighth grade, he had a smaller book. This book is a book study, Helen Keller. Um, the Magic, what is that book called? The, oh, a t The Touch of Magic. I love this book study because it still incorporates writing, spelling, grammar, vocabulary, handwriting, and art. So he would read um, some of the story and then he would do, he would read what he's supposed to read in the lesson. Then he would answer questions about what he read and do whatever the assignment is according to the lesson. The majority of the rest of the work is very independent. When you have kids in middle school, you want them to work independently. It frees up your time and then you can just check in and make sure that they're doing right. And when they're in the real world, they will be working independently. So I think it's great to have them start. Ideally, you want them to probably work independently like in third grade. Write the story. I love this little book. It was only $5. I'm gonna try to see if I can find it for you guys, the link. But it just has like words at top and then like a subject. So write a story, the last moment of childhood. And then the, the words you have are Halloween, refrigerator, peer, strength, and voices, surprise, con contribute, birds, iron, requirement. I still have him do this book in the summer because it just expands his like mind and it, helps with creative writing so he wrote a story um, using those words and using that title so and then he just goes with it the next one is a bartender's best night ever and then the words that he's supposed to use is airport appreciate curb grumpy so he underlines the words that he used and he writes a story and it's just fun and creative and fast and just something to help him stay on his creative writing we have spelling workout Spelling workout, I mean, I don't. I feel like a lot of kids don't love looking up words in the dictionary all the time. So I wouldn't give this to him all the time, but I still would give it to him regularly. You get a teacher's edition so that you can correct it. It's pretty much, I mean, I guess it just depends on the person, but it's easy to correct. But he has like crossword puzzles in here where he just gets a list of words and he has to match what the definition is and then find it in the crossword puzzle or sometimes it was just like a writing a persuasive paragraph or it just gives different little assignments there's tons of lessons in here great to practice spelling and definitions of words fix it grammar i love fix it grammar also this is the teacher's manual and then this is cj's workbook I also just got him like another notebook from the 99 cent store. So what he does with this literally every day, you have like a day one, day two, you just follow it. The first day you're reading, you're writing captions from the story, the nose, the nose tree, and you're correcting the grammar in the sentence. So it's not too much work. It's not too overwhelming. You literally in your book. And then by the time you're done with your notebook, you'll have all this, this, literature you wrote from the book the nose tree where you corrected the grammar and it's like one sentence a day it's really fast but it gets the job done as far as like working on grammar essentials and writing i love writing i love essentials and writing this comes with two videos they watch one video a day and then they do a lesson so Lesson could be on independent clauses, independent clauses, or they can give you an essay that you're gonna start working on using compound sentence, um, fragments and complete sentences, reading narratives, and you know, there's opinion essay writing. There's so many things in this. And the teacher's great and he's to the point and he's understandable. By the time you're on lesson 14, you're already writing an expository paragraph. You know, um, 
you're already breaking it down um, into detail example, detail example. So they give you like the planner. So they give you all the steps that you need for writing. I also use essentials in writing. I use that for my first grader too. And I really enjoy that. And it's hands on and it's, you're not included. Like they watch the video and do the lesson. Then you come in and, excuse me. So you come in and then chime in and you're able to help them, you know, on the worksheet after they watch the video. Exploring Handwriting. I love this book because it, you answer questions about geography, but then you're also doing like cursive writing too. I know that there's some kids that don't want to do handwriting when they're in high school. I mean, junior high, but I had my son do it because his writing is just like messy and I feel like he should be writing neater. So I do what my child needs. Foundations in Personal Finance love this also comes with video lesson by lesson it's by Dave Ramsey it's the middle school edition we have savings and budget credit and debt education careers entrepreneurship investing all the stuff that they're not going to teach you in high school this was like always an elective aside to other like this elective he would do like coding I would sign him up on other things on like out school that he was interested in. But this, I always have him like learning about money or reading books about money. Um, I even have, I'll share with those, I'll probably share with those with you a different day, like books that I had him read. Um, and I also have him read books of his choice. For Bible, if you are not sure if you, or whatever your faith is or if you do, guys do believe in the Bible this is something that I thought was great for it's a 33 three week reading plan um, Gospels and Acts it's for middle school so it'll have assignment here just to read John 10 through 12 and then you just answer the questions we would also do devotions together or I would have him go on the Bible Project. It's a website where you watch a video and then it explain and you read a certain Bible verse and then it explains to you in the video in a very like fun, easy storyline what you just read. So he would do like a combination of this book, The Bible Project, and then devotions and readings with his family. Last, I have science. This I love this book too. It's independent science. You get a, a reading book and a notebook. So your notebook in the beginning is gonna tell you what to do. So they have a check box that they can check off every single day. Literally today you're gonna read pages one through three in your text and you're gonna complete, complete 11 through 12 in your notebook. You also get experience, um, experiment. And the materials are like usually things you can find around the house, but if not, you can like, just make sure you get your materials ahead of time. So once your kid gets on that lesson, they're not stuck. But I love this because the stories are great. The experiments are great. You answer the questions about what you read. So that's like your study guide. You get, where is it? When you do your experiments, like density in nature, you have like a whole like worksheets in the back. There's different labels, like experiments, summaries. You go and you fill out everything that you did in your experiments. You can, you can find out what your objective and your purpose was, your hypothesis, what materials you use, all that for science in two books, data tables. It's like everything you need for science just in two books and then limited, like not a lot of crazy materials and you're still learning. So we enjoyed this book. This was the second edition, Exploring Creation by Apologia. And then you also get test. Well, I ordered the test too, because I would test him just to make sure that he was learning what he was supposed to be learning. 
and we're not huge on tests, but that's what we would work on. So last but not least, I do not have it with me because he threw it away. We were trying to actually get rid of a lot of his schoolwork, um, but we used Argo Prep for math. Argo Prep, I enjoyed the workbook. I thought it was great for math because it was very detailed. It was kind of like lesson by lesson so that you're building on what you already know. And it also had a video that you can log on. You, you get a link and you log on and you're able to watch a lesson if you don't understand the lesson that you're working on in your workbook, which helps me because math was not my favorite subject. So he was able to learn from that. I also had him do Khan Academy if he got stuck in a place where he wasn't striving, you know, like where he wasn't doing well. So he would work on Khan Academy. And then I also paid for a tutor also for math, just because math is not my best subject. And even when my oldest school, oldest son went to public school, I got him a tutor as well. So for math, he always had a tutor. And then through the charter that he was, I was homeschooling through, he had a teacher teach him two days a week, another math curriculum too, which is CPM. So he was working on two math curriculums and he had the help from three, um, two teachers three days a week and then two days he would work independently. So I hope that this all helps you with your eighth grade curriculum. Uh, I will be posting more information on things, but I really thought this one was important because there's just so many middle schoolers and so many parents that need um, more help. And I appreciate everyone that reached out to me and asked for my help or trust that, trust that I can help them. I will be posting more and I look forward to, you know, just sharing any information that I can that will help you on your journey or help you in your life. All right. Have a great day and thank you for watching.